So now let's look at the logical arguments. So here's an example of a logical argument. It's um, if you have the premise that if it's raining, then the street is wet, and we have another premise that it is raining, then we can conclude that the street is wet. This is actually a valid argument. You can see that because clearly, uh, I mean, you can apply one criteria to apply is if you simply think about all possible stories. Is it correct that if somebody tells you a, a story in which it's raining, then the street is wet? That's one kind of premise in the story. That is something given in that story. Also, it's given in the story that it is raining. What can you then conclude? I mean, can you conclude that the street is wet? Yes, you can. I mean, I mean, of course, uh, you know Lewis Carroll or Alice in Wonderland or something. You can, you can come up with some. You can just say words and string words together that make some absurd claim. But the point is that in any kind of scenario we can imagine in a story, where we know that in that world, fictitious world maybe, if it's raining, the street is wet, and we also know that it's raining, then we can conclude that the street is wet. It's simply uh, what is called a syllogism. It holds in all possible situations we can imagine. I mean, if you imagine a situation where it's different, it's because you actually haven't understood the meaning of the sentences or the propositions. Now, the structure of a logical argument in what is called a form of the syllogism is typically you have a list of premises. Let's call them P1, P2, up to Pn. These are premises. And then from those premises, we have a conclusion. So this is sort of the structure of a logical argument. In the case we just looked at, with the street is wet, uh, if, it's, if, if it's raining, the street is wet, and uh, that it is raining, we can actually present it like with sort of a, on a form, like you see here, we have one premise is saying, if A, then B, and you can see A is, it is raining, and B is the street is wet. So basically what it's saying is that if it's raining, then the street is wet. The other next premise is saying it is raining. And by combining these two, we simply conclude B, that is, the street is wet. The way we often write this is to, to write A and an error B, that means, and we read it, A implies B. It's simply saying, or sometimes we will say, if A, then B, and we write it like this. So we can actually also, we can write it here, the argument is simply, we have a premise saying A implies B, and we have another premise saying A, and from these two premises we conclude B. This argument is actually called monus ponens. So the principle that we from a premise A implies B, or from a premise A can conclude B, that's called monus ponens. We can actually also write it as a rule, so this is uh, in, this, in general in logic, when we want to uh, explain a rule or write down a valid way of uh, reasoning, it's often presented in this kind of format like a fraction, where the things on the top are the things we have already established. So the way to read this is that if we already know, or already have proved, or already have assumed, or whatever, we have already derived that A implies B, and we have also derived A, from these two things we conclude B. What is below this uh, line, below the, the fraction, so to speak, this is what we conclude. So this is a way to, to, to read the, the rule. A implies B, and from A, from A implies B, and from A we can derive B. So in the class we, we talked about this, this um, exercise, a mini exercise. It's basically, I'm not going into this, I mean the task was to identify the two premises and the conclusion. I'll skip that here. And I'll also skip the solution, but it's on the slides, of course, you can look at it on the, on the QM+. Plus. So, there are some other ways you can, can look at, 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 at this uh, mini-exercise. We can actually put, have propositional letters. We can take a letter A that simply means the program is full of go-to statements, and the other proposition or statement is the program is horrible, and then we can combine them. If a program is full of, I mean, the first premise is the program is full of go-to statements. The second premise is that if a program is full of go-to statements, then it's horrible. From these two things, we can conclude that the program is horrible. Now, let me just say that you might not agree with that. I mean, it depends on the context. I mean, I certainly, and lots of people, 
find it very useful when they learn to program to program in languages like, for example, BASIC, where you, ha you can typically use a lot of go-to statement. So go-to statement is that you have like a list of instructions in your program, and then you might say, when, when I get to this line, I want to go back, I said go to another line, you go back in the program. Now, many programmers have very strong arguments to say that go-to statements are actually not very good. The main problem with go-to statements is just a, f a footnote I'm having here, a side remark, but it's important to understand that in programming, go-to statement can be very powerful and useful on an individual level if you program. However, even when you look at your own programs later or when other people look at your program, it's often very difficult to work out what the program is actually doing. So it's actually not a good style to use the go-to statements, even though it's a quite powerful tool in practice, I would say. There are definitely uh, lots of very easy things that you can, where you can, it gives you, in some sense it gives the programmer too much power if, if you have this go-to statement. And it also results in very bad programming style. But that's a side remark. Um, now, so so far we introduced implications that is called if and only if. Uh, so if if A then B, or you can say implies. That's implies implication. That's implies. But there are other basic logical operations. We have the not, we have the or, and we have also and. And is often written like an opposite, upside down or. But because the slide uh, typesetting in the in the PowerPoint doesn't uh, doesn't have this upside down, or I'm using another symbol that you also sometimes find in the literature for the end here. But in class, usually I will use uh, the upside down or for end. So if we have again, let's say A is a statement is raining and B is a statement the street is wet, then we can build new propositions. We can, for example, go back to the one we already looked at. If it's raining, then the street is wet. But we can also express another proposition saying, if the street is wet, then it is raining. What do you think about the statement, by the way? Is it, would you say it's valid or in the real world, if you think about it, is it, okay, this is just a, uh, let's see, no, it's actually not, we would not say normally it's valid because uh, you see, if the street is wet, then it's raining. That is not valid, sort of normally, because it could be the street is wet because it has it has been raining ten minutes ago and maybe it stopped raining. It's still wet the street, or it could be wet because there have been some. Uh, it has been washed by some um, machine, or it could be wet for many different reasons. Uh, maybe there was a flooding or something like that, but it was not raining. It's just that the, the water is happened to be wet, you know. Now. Uh, but that's not what we are concerned about here. We don't. It's not about whether the statement is true or false or valid or not valid. We are just simply making statements, building up statements. For example, another statement we can build is A and B. It's saying it is raining and the street is wet. We are not concerned about whether this in general is true or not. Now we just we can just note we can make the statement. We can also say it is raining or the street is wet. Or we can make the statement it's not raining. It's written like this. Actually, we can more precisely we can say it's not the case that it is raining. But of course, in ordinary language, we can simply express it like this: that it is not raining. The same for this. Uh, it's not the case that B holds. It's not the case that the street is wet. That means that the street is not wet in ordinary language. Now, here's an exercise class again. I will because it's a podcast, so I'll kind of skip it. But um, if we take a statement like it's raining and B to be the street is wet, we can build a number of other statements. And in the exercise, people are basically, you're basically asked to, to kind of put these statements into words. And you already notice some problems here. That's part of the point of this exercise is how difficult it actually is and how... Uh, so, so let's start off here. Uh, in the beginning, I mean, the A and B is easy, the street is wet, and it's raining. What about not A or B? That is, it's not raining or it's raining. It's already kind of a bit strange thing to say from a normal perspective, because in ordinary language, we have this principle of relevance, and it's not a very informative, relevant statement to say it's not raining or it's raining. But in logic, 
it's a, a simply a correct statement. It's simply a valid statement. That's something we'll come back to later in the course. But the, basically, it's uh, in the kind of in in certain in ordinary logic, it's considered to be valid because. But um, we will return to that issue later. It turns out that it's a much more complicated whether or not a or a actually is valid, and this, and we will return to that later. Okay. So now, the same for the next statement and the next one. It is it's straightforward to say. You can look it on the slide, on the slides. Now, now we have uh, in the problem we we also have to try to put this kind of statement into words. It's basically saying, you can say, we have a bracket here. I didn't mention brackets, but basically what it means is if we take this as a proposition inside the bracket, we look at this whole thing as a statement, and the whole thing inside the bracket is a statement, and then basically this statement here is saying this statement implies this statement. This one is saying it's raining or the street is not wet. So the whole thing is if it's raining or the street is not wet, then if it's raining, the street is if it's raining the street sorry if it's the street is wet then it's raining that's what the whole thing is saying and you can already see that it's kind of very strange set sentence from an ordinary language perspective it's it's also difficult to say uh, even here is it might be a bit confusing where to put the bracket and so on in the next example it's even more extreme because it turns out that there's an ambiguity in this statement because you can both put the bracket here, there's a kind of a missing bracket here. You can either put the bracket here, or you can put the bracket from here to here. And actually, you get two different meanings. But also, even if you put the bracket, you will notice that it's extremely kind of a tongue twister to even say the sentence and, and process the sentence. And that's very common. Many of the things we will look at in this course, we will look at various propositions, and, and some of these propositions might be about computer programs or about other things. Uh, they are typically much more, far too complicated to actually process in ordinary language. So they have to be handled uh, more like formulas we can operate on. So again, in class I did an exercise, we'll not go into it here, but it's just some examples of, again, about arguments where you have to identify the premise and the conclusion. So here's an example. To compose original music requires consciousness. This could be one premise. Another premise could be that computers are not conscious. And from that, we can conclude that computers will never be able to compose original music. Now, we might, of course, not agree with that at all. I mean, some people might very much believe that computers already can maybe uh, compute original music. There are some, some people might say that, other people might say it's not really original music or it's not really sound good or something, but maybe in the future they can do it. So maybe somebody has a different viewpoint. This person, he thinks that computers are good at carrying out algorithms. And another premise is that all you need to compose original music is a good algorithm. So from these two premises, it actually follows that a computer will be able to compose original music. Um, and so forth. You can build up your own thing. So you can see that people can disagree. And we cannot settle who is right and who is wrong in these premises just by looking at the logical argument. We have to go to address the actually different fundamental beliefs or premises that the people are, are putting forward. So in the class, we looked at some of these uh, exercises. I'm not going to be able to do that. But you can also, instead of having A to be uh, it's raining and B that the street is uh, wet, you can also replace it by other statements. And the argument is the very same argument you applied for the for the street and whether the street was wet or not, the same type of argument could be applied about whether con computers can compose music, the different premises. Now notice there was a not here put B, computers are not conscious. So strictly you might also argue that I should present it slightly different. That's what it be done on this slide. So the not I didn't put a not here, I just said computers are conscious, but then I put a not in front. So now you can, you get a kind of a bit more complicated type of argument, but essentially that is the same, it's also a valid argument. It's a, essentially the same type of argument from the street is wet and it's raining, but now we, we are writing it down using the not also. And of course we can do the same for the other algorithms and, and it's just variations of 
of, um, of, of uh, the, the, the example with the street is red, but here's a bit more complicated in the last example, but I, I will not go through it in the exercise. You can look at the slides uh, on QM+. Thank you very much.